Okay, it's seven o'clock. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. Okay. It's a continuation of the Verizon at uh, River Drive and one of the probably the only really sticking point of the last meeting <coughs> hearing was uh, raised could this go at the sewer pump station number seven and Verizon has gone to the selectman and we have a letter from the board of selectmen I well, the town administrator I guess it's from the town selectman anyways um, regarding sewer pump station and telecommunication power this letter confirms the vote of the select board taken at the meeting of March 26, 2014 concerning the proposal to use the location of sewer pump station number 7 on Stockbridge Road as a potential site for the installation of a telecommunications tower. Select board reviewed the site characteristics and determined the property was <coughs> ill-suited to such a use. The select board voted 302 not to issue a request for proposal for the sale or lease of that property for the purpose of installing a telecommunication tower. Sincerely, David Nixon, Town Administrator. Dated March 27, 2014. You really want to walk away from all that rent? I will be uh, not participating in as much as I am in the butter. Okay. What? Oh, you mean on the sewer pump station? I'm sorry, if, if, they, oh. if they went in a place where they are allowed by right, or allowed under the bylaw, the town would be collecting rent on, from them. Well, I think that we didn't think the site was suitable. I didn't think the... They showed us they could fit on it. Yeah. Well, well, according, it according to DPW and the sewer department, it wouldn't work. No. And the two that abstained, it was, it was a 302 abstention. Uh, Guilford Waring and John Moskevich abstained because they're partially involved with um, the department. So it was Dan and I and uh, Brian that voted not to go with sewer pump station, that we found it more feasible to use the one on River Drive. Um, one on River Drive is was more way. access for wave communication, not within a um, residential area. Um, that we just found the site more suitable um, for our needs and and for what it would be for the uh, fire and safety communications. We thought it probably was a little bit too close to the road, if I'm not mistaken. It was within what. 75 feet or something like that, that's too close to the road. And you realize they're asking us to bend the bylaw to the point of breaking to accommodate where they want to go. Can I say something? This is, a lot, excuse no, me, no, I'm no, just no. asking the select board for this, clarification. The select board, this was kind of brushed over. And I'd like to make the point clear. What Bill is saying is that we have rules and regulations. For example, you heard us discussing parking. Because the town meeting says this is what parking is going to be, we adopt these bylaws, we do not have wiggle room because the town says that's what it should be. Whereas this tower is supposed to be a business zone, industrial zone, or municipal uh, facilities. I feel we don't have that wiggle room to say, forget what the town meeting said, we'll do what we want to do. I don't think we have that authority. I know there's some, some ways that uh, we can overrule certain things. For example, uh, 40B housing. We do not allow apartments in town, but if, if we don't have enough uh, affordable housing, we can be overruled. Granted. So that's a certain provision being overruled. Solar panels. We can regulate, but we cannot prohibit. I have not heard what provision why does Verizon have to have special treatment to overrule what the townspeople of Hadley had voted? This is the key issue, not whether it's a safety issue or whether it's near housing, but it has to do with the zoning bylaws. What gives them the right to overrule our local zoning? Do you think this uh, site is uh, acceptable? Pardon? Do you think this site here is acceptable? It doesn't matter if it's acceptable or not, but what does the what does the town meeting vote mean to us? It means to me that I have to abide by the rules and regulations when you swear in. And I and I would like to know what special provision Verizon has. Maybe on the state statute they do have some special provisions. 
I don't know, but this is what I would like to see. Verizon has taken the position that federal law, by and large, overrides state regulation. And our town council has advised us that we probably do have authority to, um, to issue the requested waiver. But, as I said, they are asking us to bend the bylaw to the point of breaking. Um, and we just, that's why we, that's why we held them up the first time and said, you overlooked town property where you could have installed this by right, or virtually by right. And, um, and that's, that was part of the reason we put that in the bylaw was that town property is scattered around. And to the extent that it, something wouldn't fit in the allowed area, that the town would be able to reap the benefit of having it when it's not on, in the business district or the industrial district, because it's already being used for town purposes, municipal purposes, public purposes. So that's why we wrote it that way. Um, and you know, that's, that's, why we, that's why we held them up. Uh, because they hadn't investigated it. And if you're saying you don't want to put out a request for a proposal, that's, that's fine. Then we'll just deal with it uh, with what we've got. Um, but we didn't, want, we didn't want them to let, we didn't want to let them walk away from you on it. You're deciding to let them, to give them a pass. And your argument are more appropriate, the health, safety, and welfare issue, it looks better out there, there are no houses. Those arguments are for the Zoning Board of Appeals. I don't feel they're for us because I, I personally feel we don't have that with you. And an engineer for Verizon told us at the last meeting of the meeting before that from an engineering perspective, they could put a tower on the Stockbridge Road site. So that's not an issue. And I assume by that he meant that it would be safe to put it there. Hey, yes. Um, just to respond to some of these comments, um, the, um, it, I mean, just because we might be able to physically put it there, we do a lot of other due diligence, which, you know, we, we started, we did some, and we did find issues there. We found issues with visual impact. And even if you were, you know, we haven't even gone through a public comment, per, uh, you know, hearing process with that site. And if we were in the public, in that area, the residential neighbors that are very close, within 75 feet, within 100 feet, if they came out and opposed it, even if you were to grant the permit, they could appeal it. There's no, and we're talking at least two years at least two years to even be come back before you to, to ask for a permit for that site if we were to as, you know determine uh, everything else worked which as of now we said it, it doesn't and uh, and there's no saying that we would get all the approvals for that site and if you're concerned about income meantime we'll be putting this tower up immediately and there'll be tax income that the town will um, enjoy as opposed to delaying this process for another few years hoping you know potentially and I'd say with less you know possibility of it even happening of getting rental income from that site so you know you'll have money immediately from the tax revenue from these you know it, from these two sites that we will pay um, so and, and the town does have you have a waiver provision in the bylaw that allows you to grant um, waivers from those provisions that were drafted 15, over 15 years ago in a situation when you created the overlay district, it was without even knowing where the needs would be for the town. And having that waiver provision allows you the flexibility so that when we come in and just say, we don't have service in this area of town and there's no sites that work except this one, which we think is a really ideal site for this stack that we're going to build that's gonna mimic other stacks on the site that no one even will know that it's a telecommunications facility. That I think that um, you know that you would be doing the town um, you know justice and in, in provide allowing us to provide the service to the town that are that your public safety um, 
professionals are here telling you that you need and we're willing to work with the town we've said that so um, you know based on all those many reasons that we've said that this is a suitable site and we do have the Federal Telecommunications Act when you say we're bending the law no you'd be in compliance with the law with the Federal Telecommunications Act which says that a town cannot provide service so we would actually you would be in compliance by allowing us to provide the service that we proved that we said that we need that we established that we need in that area of town without there being any other suitable sites and without any delay and we would get this we would start the construction immediately <coughs> Any other, any other comments? I, have, I think we felt at the, uh, at the meeting last week that um, it's been a long eight years and we've had a lot of roadblocks between the historical society and um, that took forever. Um, and it's really a safety issue at this oh, point. You, you heard from, wait, wait a minute, Joel. You heard from the chief of police last time uh, when we were here that uh, their radios and things don't work in some areas of town. Um, Mike, you can also chime in on that, that, you know, it's, it's a matter of being able to communicate and with our dispatch and um, uh, we just felt that another two years, you know, developing another RFP will just be not a benefit to the town. And, you know, Dan, you can chime in also. Just, but I'm just telling you, Joe, like what we did correct. last week. Wait. Your I mean, that's, please. that's what we talked about last week, that's what we came to a conclusion on, that we didn't want to waste any more time on this, that we felt it was the utmost important for the town uh, to go forward with this project and be able to have this for our infrastructure. I just got one, th uh, one point. Where was the propane tank located on this property? Wasn't there a propane tank? A which tank? A propane tank on the sewer property pump station supposed to be in the, for lack of a better word, the front yard. How big was that tank? Uh, 500 gallon. 500 gallon propane tank, 75 feet from the road? Yep. Yeah. I don't know. We had all the clearances, setback clearances, but it wasn't the ideal situation. Joe. Joyce is confusing the two towers. We're talking about the tower on the Montgomery site. I you am were talking about the delay with the historical society with the property on Co East Street. Correct. That is going ahead. That's been approved. And Correct. that's going to be a lot taller. And that is going to satisfy the communications issue. But we and need both, Joe. We need both for the... We don't um, know yet. Do you know if, if the tower is I do know that when they're out the tower is going taller, we don't know. We, we still don't have know. dead spots in and around North Hadley. Sorry, yeah. my, my police officers are telling me that. My fire chief is telling me that. That's what this, so this present is, tower. We're going to raise the tower 25 feet higher. That doesn't necessarily take care of. We sit in a valley. I mean, you sit in the middle of something where there isn't good service out in that area. Are, are there any towers being constructed on the Hatfield side of the river that would take care of North Hadley? Yep. If there were other opportunities, we would have taken advantage of that and not been through this process. <clears throat> I think this also benefits everybody who uses a cell phone in town. It's for really it's not only for public safety and for revenue, it's for the public good also. Who would have thought 20, 25, 30 years ago that we would have this, we would need this? Well, that was this the and that's something you couldn't plan for. Yeah, that's actually a part a conversation we had here a few weeks ago because they I tell us so they don't. tell us that even though we uh, even though I think several of us live in North Hadley and have adequate cell phone service, but Verizon and from Verizon, but Verizon assures us they we don't. I get drop calls on where I am. I That's know. hot enough. You know, we don't get drop calls in North Hadley, but they tell us <laughs> that their service is subpar. I, I, I hope you're right. I've not you seen that reflected in my bill. <laughs> I hope you're right. So I, yes, I, just right. Have, I just have a question. So for the location under the Wireless Communication Service District, it's pretty specific in 14.3 where it's supposed to be. Are you saying that you're in the wireless communication service district or you're saying no, this site this it? site is not the overlay district. And when it was laid out, 
it was just picked as far as, you know, it was arbitrary and saying, okay, we think this was a good, best suited site would be the business district, the industrial district, and, and town property without, you know, there wasn't the science then to know exactly what other sites right. might but be. But I'm just saying, right, right so we, now, are, we are outside the, to the district. Bylaw, right. And we and we've asked for the waiver to apply the waiver to apply to allow you to approve it outside the the overlay district, which is supported by the Telecommunications Act and by your town attorney that said that that and is appropriate to do that. I mean, have you gone to the zoning board of appeals or? We don't need to. There's no need to. You have the provision is the planning board allows you to have the waiver. I don't see in our bylaw that we can waive and put you in in a district that you're not allowed. Well, we did ask your town attorney for an opinion interpreting that section, and he did. He did. Basically, Joel said that if we didn't have a clause like that, they would have to go to the ZBA, and he would have to tell the ZBA to approve it. As a matter of fact. As an abutter, I received a notice from the attorney that it was for the Zoning Board of Appeals, the hearing. So they're probably well, you know, thinking ahead. That was a typo typographical error. Oh, oh well, yeah. uh, we're, we're clearly been before the Planning Board, so not the Zoning Board of Appeals. This would be the logical move. I mean, I'm not opposed to this, and if we need better service, I mean, I don't care about my personal cell service, which I have Verizon and it's fine, but if our fire department or police department say we need it, then, you know, I, I believe them. But I don't know how we can grant it if we're not allowed to grant it. But you do have the authority to grant it. Well, and what if someone wants to put, you know, a gas station in, you know, the middle of Shad? I mean, but no, we're, this waiver really. provision is within the telecommunications section. It's not a general waiver for the your bylaw generally. It's specific to the telecommunications section. And I believe it was crafted because of the flexibility that you need in order to comply with the tele Federal Telecommunications Act, which says you cannot deny co us coverage. But we're not denying it. We're just saying you need to go in certain places. No, but your town attorney said that's not the case. It's not necessary. Well, then clearly we may need to revise our bylaw, but it's hard to, it's hard to make these <coughs> jumps when our bylaw says what it says. It says that you have the authority to it, grant it a it waiver. It says in our bylaw. Yes, it yeah, does. It's section 14.9. It does, we've never interpreted it as broadly as it is being, as we are being asked to do it. That but, we can put it in any district. Um, all, I, all I will, I'll just repeat that I did speak with Joel Bard, our town council, and he did say that because of the nature of the, um, the application, because it is telecommunications, and because federal law to some extent overrides state law, um, because they had to freeze us out in order to maximize the revenue when the auction frequencies off, um, anyway, Joel does say that um, uh, that we do have sufficient authority to give them the waivers they are requesting. Jim? Yes, Mike. Well, I, I mean, I have two comments. One is on the public safety side. I can tell you that Mount Warner is our biggest issue. I understand that we're going to be raising our public safety building, or our public safety tower up 20 feet, and that certainly will improve. But we will still have areas because of the infrastructure that we have right now with the North Adley fire station. Right now, we're running off of old rising cable, basically old, old uh, copper um, phone lines. So it fails consistently, and our police and fire do have numerous dead spots. For example, including our bus busing company. Uh, bus accident on the other side over by Millsite Road. They weren't able to use their radios because they, they, they didn't make it over Mount Warner to hit our receiver, which could then go to our dispatch or to the DPW dispatch. This would most definitely clear up all those issues because it would be all new infrastructure. We wouldn't be running off of the old copper wire. My question is, as, as a resident, because I do respect the farmland out there, is this, is the concern 
the way it's going to look? Is it the concern just on the bylaw, which sounds like that you have a reasonable way to approve it? Or I mean, the way I look at it, if you're going to stick that that big tower, if you want to take a look at what it looks like, come to the fire station. But if you're going to put that at the pump station, I understand we'd be getting revenue in a different way. Um, but is it going to look better than what they've constructed now? Is that, I guess I'm just kind of confused of what, what the, the concern is if it's actually. Well, part of it is that they come in, they're saying it looks like what's already there. But what is already there is an exemption to zoning. That falls into Chapter 40A, Section 3's agricultural exemption, agriculture and floriculture. So, um, but for that exemption, Montgomery Rose would never have been able to build what they built where they built it. So it's kind of bootstrapping, saying, you know, someone went in on one zoning exemption to put in smokestacks, and now they're saying, well, we're just putting it where there are already smokestacks. So yeah, that that you know, it's a little bit of a problem. But it's it's, I guess the real question is that in most other areas of zoning, the authority to uh, waive certain provisions of the bylaw just isn't allowed to the extent they're asking <coughs> us to do it. And that's what, you know, we've, we've spent 20 plus years doing it one way and they're saying that they're special, basically. And I'm not denying that they have, they have some leverage behind them, but they are just working on, on the, they're basically saying we want to do this and they'd like us to get out of the way. Well, strictly speaking, from being a fire chief, I can just say that it's very frustrating when you're not, when it's not possible to to speak with one of your firefighters or a responding unit because you don't have the radio coverage, and they've been more than willing to put whatever we want on this tower to help us enhance that ability. So, as far as I'm concerned, as uh, the person who has to deal with all these emergencies, um, you know that the not so much pleasure of having to deal with some pretty serious issues and not having proper radio communications. To me, it's uh, it's pretty much a no-brainer on that side. If we're arguing about whether it's a, a smokestack or a tower next to a pumping station, then, and I completely understand where you're coming from, and um, I have to look at it from the public safety side. As a resident, I do understand. And we understand, we understand the public safety side, and we don't want to spend the town's money, but have you thought of putting up a tower somewhere? Yeah. From my perspective, the Stockbridge Road thing, and admittedly I've only been serving for a couple of months now, uh, accomplished four things. Verizon gets its tower, which they want. The town gets some revenue. Uh, we fulfill our, fulfill our obligations under the so-called federal law. And most importantly, we don't have to give a waiver. So it's like a win-win for all sides. Except that we might, we, no. <laughs> there's no, uh, we wouldn't be there. Pardon me? We're not, we, we wouldn't consider that site as a suitable site. The engineer testified that, that, that we're only one that it was a Except site. that's only one component of our due diligence of whether we would select a site. I think part of the reason we're here is that Verizon overlooked this when they started looking. And they don't want to go back. Um, you know, we, we've been talking with them for a year and a half, or two years, about finding other sites that would not bend the zoning bylaw. And they did look at other sites. They looked at some sites in Amherst, uh, where we don't know what the zoning is, and it's not really our issue. Uh, they looked at the North Hadley Church, I believe, the uh, Second <coughs> Congregational Spire. And I'm not giving testimony that we overlooked that site because we had a different site acquisition person who could very well have looked at that site and determined it wasn't suitable. We just don't have the documentation of all the sites that he looked at and he's no longer with the company. So that is not, I cannot say that that's the case. It's just that I couldn't tell you, we couldn't tell you information when you asked about that site. So we went out and looked at it again. But we, we would have passed on it then and we would pass on it now. So. We did provide documentation in our uh, application and presentation as to all the sites that we did look at. I believe we provided a site search summary yeah. to you. 
list. And it's all in our application. And we looked at a lot of sites in Hadley as well as adjacent uh, communities. Yeah, and that's, that's what I said. That's the basis of what I said, that you did look at a lot of other sites, but apparently not at this one because it oh. was not in the documentation. But then we did yeah. look at it. Yeah. I'm going to ask an awkward question, and please don't take offense, because it's not meant to be offensive. I think we should be looking at what's best for the residents of the town of Hadley. All right? Is the is waiver, not granting a waiver, that important that it would override a, a certain benefit to the town? I don't know if that's true. If we have, if we have the site at Montgomery where uh, what I'm told would be a better site and would be a better asset to the town as far as service goes, as opposed to the other, uh, to the sewer pump station. I, I don't see a problem with this. I don't really know. Was it all over a waiver? It's it's all over breaking the law. Your argument is a good one to the Zoning <coughs> Board of Appeals, not. We could we gave ourselves waivers for wiggle room like the height of a tower if there's an outlier building, but I don't think we can negate zoning. Is is so your argument and the chief's argument is to the zoning board of appeals? <coughs> is, is her, that would be the next step if this is denied. Is her, is, her argument, is her argument valid that you can grant a waiver? Town council is of the opinion that we can grant the requested waivers. I did What's speak. I, I speak, spoke. Uh, I'm. You've been doing this a long time. I right? work with town council, uh, uh, and I'm. I'm going to. I'm going to take his advice that we do have the authority to grant the waiver, and it apparently is the only option we have left since you've decided not to offer them a place at the pump station. Um, and as I said, they have they have provided evidence that the service. And I, I think we could drag up the the exact language, but I think the language was something to the effect of they are unable. Verizon is unable to provide service at the level at which it wants to provide service, um, which is something that's sometimes hard to grasp because they are providing service that is adequate for many purposes. We're not getting drop calls. I live within a mile of the site, uh, of the proposed site, and I do not have drop calls, but I understand that your testimony was that you want to provide a different, a higher level of service. And consistent service, so as, yeah. the, as the service is, there's greater um, usage, which is happening, there will never be a drop in service, and it won't be like us fixing and coming in afterwards, preventative, we're doing preventative rather than curative when there are issues, so that you'll never notice the extreme increase in usage. It, it isn't, and it, with all due respect, it isn't the kind of service like we're just being frivolous about it. Your own public uh, safety person is here tonight. Well, wait a minute. Let's, put, whoa, 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 let's whoa. put that aside. Separate Verizon from public safety. There are two different items here. We're not. We're You're not entertaining. About being able to make a telephone call. Okay. Yes. That's all I'm saying is that okay. I just heard the chief say that they weren't able to communicate with certain uh, either first responders or with someone that's had an accident because. The service is not there. By radio, not by telephone. They're talking about radio. By radio. Okay. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. So, okay. so and that's why we're saying that, you know, we you, you have... We don't have a tower in that part of town. So there could be some service that's coming from some other site that is not reliable service. Verizon Wireless, as a company, as a as a service provider for telecommunications that's what we are and for not just cell phone service but for all the other data services and all our lte services that businesses use and public service uses and general residents use that's what we are under the telecommunications <coughs> act we are licensed to provide a reliable service in the area that we have licenses to serve and that is all that we are trying to do tonight and to ask for the ability 
to have a structure approved in which we can attach antennas internally to provide the service to all areas up in that service area of North Hadley to residents, to businesses, to uh, public service providers, to public safety providers, so that we can continue with a service that will be connected with your, um, your tower that's at the uh, public safety complex and other towers that are in that general area so that you have ubiquitous, continuous, reliable service. And that's what we are charged by the Federal Communications Commission to do. And that's what we are asking for. Okay. Any <coughs> other new piece of information? I call for a vote. Okay. A motion. Uh, I... I will make a motion to approve the application for a site plan approval special permit and approve the application for a wireless communication special permit based upon the following findings and upon the following conditions. Um, the project satisfies, I can't say it, <laughs> satisfies the general purpose of the bylaw, uh, or that it is intent, um, or that it is, uh, I guess I could say the project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. I uh, can't say it's <clears throat> not prohibited by the bylaw. Um, 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 do we have the latest plan? Or does someone, can someone reference the... We have it with us. The latest revision date of your site plan. November 4th, 2013. Revision number two. The so work conducted in uh, accordance with the site plan of 11-4-2013, revision two, will satisfy the bylaw. Uh, we are, um, planning board will grant the following waivers, um, location, separation from building, <clears throat> height from 55 to 80, and um, uh, dimensional scale of the plan, I believe, was the, uh, the other. Uh, copies of the application have been distributed as provided in the bylaw. Uh, the proposal satisfies site plan review criteria. Uh, following planning board uh, places the following conditions as to site plan approval. Design features, uh, including but not limited to landscaping. Drainage design, exterior colors, roof lines, doors and windows are an integral part of the approved design. And any deviation from the plans as presented to and approved by this board will be considered a violation of the terms of the site plan approval, unless the changes are approved beforehand. Approval is for the following use only, a wireless communications facility. <coughs> There'll be no signs. Uh, landscaping installed and maintained as shown on the plan. Uh, there'll be no new outdoor lighting. Correct? There's a light on the shelter. It's, mo it's motion sensor. Motion sensor. No, okay. Uh, no storage trailers, shipping containers, temporary or permanent storage structures or any other storage facility not depicted on the approved site plan are allowed. Applicant shall provide performance security. I forget what we did for. We have a letter. We submit the letter um, with the amount. It's 13 in the application. And 
I don't think they should provided security. I think we may not have asked for it at the communication at the at the uh, oh, okay. at the town site because the town will is your landlord. Right. Yes. So it would be for this. I think we waived the. Uh, I think we waived. We have the key commission expense would be forty-seven thousand, so we okay. have a bond for that. Um, okay, so call it uh, decommissioning security of forty-seven thousand um, in the form of letter of credit bond or cash deposit in a form acceptable to the town treasurer and approved by the planning board. Approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required. Any project changes directed by other boards must be approved by the planning board. Uh, project will be reviewed for compliance by an independent consultant on behalf of the planning board. Uh, site plan approval should not become effective until the notice of decision is affected, affixed to the original site plan and the applicant's engineer certifies the conditions set forth herein are noted and incorporated into the site plan. The original is signed by the planning board chair or clerk and copies are filed with the planning board and the building inspector. And I don't think we have to do since site plan approval is a special permit, we did not do the rest of those conditions, which relate to other projects. Under section here, general condition, do we want to make a note that this is granted under section 14.9 of the zoning bylaw, the uh, exemption? I'll put that in um, the waiver section. Okay. Um, Section 14.9. 14 14.9 14 as the plan the proposal is otherwise non conforming. Okay, you have use waiver. Otherwise, a non conforming use. in this zoning district. Okay. What did that say again? So uh, the waivers are granted under authority of section 14.9 as the proposal is otherwise a non-conforming use in this zoning district. Okay. Can we say on there that it's only for, only for Verizon and the town of Hadley? Did we specify um, that? Uh, we probably don't want to say that because we don't want to go through this again with AT&T. So we may want... Sure I would. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, I think we want to allow them to co-locate other things on the tower. Right. Will so they come in if they co-locate? Should we... They have to come yes. in. They have to come in. Right. So we're just going to say it's, 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 it's limited to a wireless communications facility. They're not going to be able to put a... Verizon store there or any anything else, but they will be able to put the tower as shown on that specific plan. And the town can co-locate. And town of uh, happy co-location. Good note. Okay. I think that is the motion, which I if you'll bear with me, or if you will forgive me, I don't want to reread it. <laughs> um, I will second it. That is the motion. And a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes four to zero with one <coughs> abstention. Abstention? I guess that's an abstention. Yes. yes. Or not, partici not well, participating. Not participating. Right. 